same market making COMEX liquidity providers straddling a foot between both markets, privileged to do so, they're not required to back the COMEX leg of these trades with physical GLD ETF being drained. This is tightening the noose on paper gold. Now, very, it, this looks, to me, this looks very much like a playbook from Sun Tzu's The Arts of War. In the midst of chaos, there is also opportunity. So to provide context, during the end of month COMEX games sell-off, the SGE premiums have, when necessary, intraday expanded as high as $98 per ounce over the synthetically driven COMEX price action. Conversely, when the London gold price rises, by design, these premiums contract accordingly, with SGE gold pretty much ironing out a lot of this Western-generated paper market volatility and maintaining a much more stable price, kind of varying somewhere between 30 bucks to $100 an ounce, as may be necessary. So this move by China to underpin the SGE gold price shines a light on the clash of these two global siloed gold markets. One, the SGE 100% backed with physical bullion, and the other, the COMEX unbacked by physical gold. This is an inflection point that should have our attention. And as we previously have drawn attention to, the Fed is the only remaining central bank that is net short gold. And the problem for the Fed is that their sole remaining COMEX-centric price management tool, which we're talking about, are being picked off by global exchanges accessing the casino's EFP backdoor. And we know what the EFP is. It is simply a mechanism for the COMEX to transit an unbacked, non-NSFR-compliant paper gold futures position into a spot-compliant deliverable position. And this is where we shine that light on the swan song of the two major Fed price suppression tools. There are others, but they really rely on these two to even function. Um, with the price setting COMEX derivative markets siloing US traders inside a rigged synthetic casino trading environment, it's often forgotten that gold and silver are in fact foreign exchange currencies. Now in the real world, both gold and joined at the hip silver really uh, trade as components of an interconnected multi-trillion dollar global foreign exchange market. People forget that because they're siloed inside the casino. And while the Fed, in agreement with other central banks, admit that they regularly intervene in the foreign exchange currency crosses by agreement, such as the dollar yen, the euro, the pound, of course, none of these fiat currencies have any hard backing to them. And the very act of intervening in them at a keystroke increasing fiat money supply illustrates this can be done. But what we've previously looked at, the primary Fed tool to manage gold against the dollar is also conducted in the foreign exchange markets. However, after cracks appeared in the LBMA gold market in 2013, huge cracks appeared. People were unable to, were demanding delivery, couldn't get it. US traders were suddenly forbidden by the CFTC to directly trade gold as a currency cross. This was to lock these US traders inside the proxy paper-driven COMEX casino, where they could intervene. It's a bit like in the old wire fraud days, days when you'd have the horse racing and, 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 and someone would already know uh, they delay the feed. You know, so, so it's, it's, it's almost akin to that. And we've previously looked in detail at the mechanics of this foreign exchange trade which in plain vanilla form simply means if you're long one leg of a foreign exchange cross, you're short the other. It's that simple. That's how foreign exchange works. Uh, so that when you're long dollar, it means you're short gold. So with these constraints in place, it locks the U.S. traders into a proxy futures trade that the house controls. However, outside the casino this year, on the 1st of January, FX gold was raised to a cash equivalent first year asset class, forcing liquidity providers to back these foreign exchange trades, trades with physical gold, exposing a major flaw in the casino's 50 year rigged unbacked paper gold game. And unlike the NSFR compliant foreign exchange market, these same market making COMEX liquidity providers straddling a foot between both markets, 
privilege to do so, they're not required to back the COMEX leg of these trades with physical. This means the COMEX proxy FX gold dollar trade represents a naked short bet against gold. Exactly what Basel III NSFR conditions was seeking to avoid. Now, naked short in so much as while both are technically a first year cash equivalent, I mean, the long dollar should be a first year cash equivalent, physical gold has zero counterparty risk, whereas some 32 what trillion of national debt and growing uh, and growing, I mean, backing the dollar leg, that does pose infinite risk. So they're not equal. I mean, as an aside, that's what, $95,000 of debt for every single person in the US. But look, I'm digressing. The divergence is why the COMEX proxy trade is going to backfire. This time, even more dramatically than was evidenced in September 2008, when gold surged for three solid years without any pullbacks. It rose by over 1200 bucks an ounce, often in times in sync with the dollar because they were printing dollars following QE being implemented. And, and we saw gold rising along with dollar as a safe haven. And, and Call it a safe haven if you wish. So we're going to see this breaking of this this tool. And with this in mind, let's kind of drill down into the month of May, which we've just been through, um, and this how this siloed counterintuitive COMEX driven action, as it progressed, it provided a perfect example of why due to paper market liquidity outflows, the Fed will ultimately have to abandon this tool and move to revalue Treasury gold before a rash of repatriation requests exposes the degree of the rehypothecation of these unaudited 8,133 tons of reserves. We talked about that in more detail last time. But last week's COMEX centric options gaming, and we talked, you know, don't glaze over guys, options just simply a derivative. Um, that it comes to expire at the end of each month and everything is rigged. These tools are used to make the price close mark to market at a particular day at the end of a month, 